Welcome to this Saturday Travel and History Tip. And today we will be back in Alabama. And when I had mentioned the, the national parks, I failed to mention the Selma to Montgomery Voting Rights Trail, or the National Historic Trail, as it is known, which celebrates the landmark civil rights activities in the state. It all started in the town of Selma, which was established in 1820 and is known as the Queen City of the Black Belt. We traveled along the historic route, which is the Selma to Montgomery National Historic Trail. We were able to stop off at the Selma to Montgomery National Historic Trail at Lowndes County Interpretive Center. Although the museum was closed because of COVID, we were able to walk around the property and read the signs. The Selma to Montgomery National Historic Trail traces the path taken by the three voting rights marches from Selma to Montgomery in 1965. The trail follows public roads through the city of Selma, Lowndes County, in the city of Montgomery. The trail is well marked and open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Located across the Dalles, Lowndes, and Montgomery counties in lower central Alabama, the Selma to Montgomery National Historic Trail follows 54 miles of U.S. Highway 80 and local streets, beginning at the steps of the Brown Chapel AME Church in Selma and ending at the steps of the Alabama Capitol Building in Montgomery. The march route follows the route of three 1965 civil rights marches that were instrumental in gaining voting rights for African American citizens. It started in Selma. At times, history and fate meet at a single time, in a single place, to shape a turning point in man's unending search for freedom. So it was at Lexington and Concord. So it was a century ago at Appomattox. So it was last week in Selma, Alabama. And I am grateful that we have been to Lexington and Concord. We have been to Appomattox. And now we have been to Selma, Alabama. Here is an aerial view when the crowd of over 25,000 marchers were at the foot of the Alabama Capitol on the final day of the march. And we were able to visit the Capitol, and we actually stood at the base of the Capitol where we read the sign. The Selma to Montgomery March ended here on March 25, 1965. And here is another National Park sign about the Selma to Montgomery National Historic Trail, where thousands protest at the seat of government. And we will talk more about Montgomery and the Capitol in another Saturday Travel and History Tip. But we continued on after leaving downtown Montgomery to the Tuskegee Institute National Historic Site. Unfortunately, it also was closed, but we were able to get onto the university property. We walked through the gate and the lady there at the gate allowed us to walk onto the property. It is mainly an active university, but there are two buildings that are part of the Tuskegee Institute National Historic Site, and those are George Washington Carver's Museum and the Oaks, which was Booker T. Washington's home. These two famous men of American history, George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington, worked at the Institute. And here is the exterior of the George Washington Carver Museum because of COVID was closed. According to George Washington Carver, no individual has any right to come into the world and go out of it without leaving behind him distinct and legitimate reasons for having passed through it. And we have been to several George Washington Carver sites, one particularly in Missouri, and now this one. We walked around the campus, and again, these buildings are not part of the National Historic Park, they are part of the Institute, which is an active university. We walked around White Hall, and we looked at this magnificent building, and there are National Park Historic Sites signs, even though it is part of the university. And in this particular building, this was the Dining and Social Center. The young women all seated first, and then the young men marched in. But no conversation is allowed until a simple grace is chanted by the chorus of a thousand voices. And I bet that was absolutely amazing to hear. One of the signs refers to the campus architect. I should consider it a far-reaching calamity for us to lose Mr. Taylor of Tuskegee, says Booker T. Washington. Look at the buildings around the main quadrangle. Much of what you see is the work of Robert R. Taylor, the school's original architect. Taylor also designed many buildings in other areas of the campus. And that included the Washington family home and the chapel, which he considered his masterpiece. One of the highlights of the visit to Tuskegee University was the Tuskegee Cemetery. More than 8,000 people, white and colored, rich and poor, from the lowliest farmer 
and the richest Fifth Avenue mansion crowded in around the school chapel to pay homage to Booker T. Washington. The bodies of Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, and several other former members of the Tuskegee faculty and staff and their families are buried here in the school cemetery. The university president determines who is buried here. And here is Booker T. Washington's grave marker. And here is George Washington Carver's grave. His marker reads, George Washington Carver died in Tuskegee, Alabama, January 5, 1943. A life that stood out as a gospel of self-forgetting service. He could have added fortune to fame, but caring for neither, he found and honor and being helpful to the world the center of his world was the south where he was born in slavery some seventy-nine years ago and where he did his work as a creative scientist and as we walked the streets between the university and the parking lot going over to the home of booker t washington we saw many of these alabama signs and city of tuskegee signs marking famous people and famous places you could spend just a whole day reading all the signs around the university and along the street. But we headed to the Oaks, which was the home of Booker T. Washington. I am always impressed to walk where famous people in American history have walked and hear other doors that Booker T. Washington walked through countless times. One of the really cool features outside of the park grounds along the sidewalk was this George Washington Carver Nutrition Trail. And here's the beginning. It had a few clever signs as we walked down the sidewalk. As a child, Carver was known as the plant doctor. Carver finished high school in 1885 in Minneapolis, Kansas. In 1888, Carver moved to Winterset, Iowa, where he worked as a cook. We've actually been to Winterset, Iowa. And actually, John Wayne was born in Winterset, Iowa. To pay his way through college, Carver worked in the dining hall and served as a trainer for athletic teams. How far you go in life depends on your being tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving, and tolerant of the weak and the strong, because someday in life you will have been all of these. George Washington Carver. After we left there, we went to the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site, and that will be where we will go on our next Saturday travel and history tip. American history. Learn it. Love it. Appreciate it. Thank you.